We're going to go now to Tom Rogan, who's with us in the studio. His reporter's written a lot on this from the U.K. Um, Tom, this is the, the last time anything like this happened, I think, was the 7-7 attacks in July of Correct. 2005. Yeah. 55 or 6 people yeah. uh, killed. It ha that happened in London, of course. Manchester, not a place you think of terror attacks happening. Well, you know, actually, yeah, I mean, you might not in the United States. I don't, States, that's but, right. But, but uh, in the United Kingdom, Manchester has time and again come up on the counterterrorism radar. Uh, you've had major exercises there, as you have had in London in recent years, to try and prepare for a Paris-style attack. Uh, you've also had diversion plots in terms of both al-Qaeda uh, syndicates, the old form of you know, July 7th, as you mentioned, uh, but also ISIS plots there. So it is very much on the counterterrorism radar, at least on the British sense. And by the scale of the response that we saw, I think it became quite clear early on that this was much more likely than not a, a, a coordinated terrorist attack, and a serious one based on the size uh, of the explosion uh, and the relative casualties. I think there's a reason we didn't see immediate photographs coming out of casualties, and that was that anyone in that blast radius uh, was very seriously injured or killed. Um, so we're not going to even speculate as to who might be responsible for this mm -hmm. because we'll find out soon enough and that would be unwise. But as a more general question, is there any potential terror group on the radar of British authorities that is, we're not aware of, that is not basically Middle East based? Well, I mean, you have, traditionally in the United Kingdom, the threat has been uh, either Irish uh, separatist groups, That's right. the IRA. This does not fit uh, the, an Irish Republican group targeting profile in the sense that there's an American performer. The IRA would never target Americans, also children. Uh, there's a calibration there that suggests um, a jihadist group. But again, as you say, the, the consumption of intelligence that will be very quick in terms of the forensics of the bomb, you saw how quickly uh, the British authorities have been communicating with American counterterrorism authorities. So uh, the I, I want to interrupt you really quick here, Tom. We're just getting something uh, from Sky News in Manchester. Uh, authorities there are reporting that a second explosive device apparently has been found in or near the arena, and there will be a controlled detonation hmm. of that advice. So that suggests right there a level of coordination and sophistication it, and tells us something. It, it does and I think the immediate impetus and I do think it's why you see, I suspect you will see a statement by the British Prime Minister this evening about what they call a COBA meeting which is National Security Council meeting. Um, it, it suggests more than what we have, an Omar Mateen type figure who's access to firearm because the level of one of the great benefits unfortunately if you can call it that of ISIS plotting or al-Qaeda plotting or any plotting quite frankly in recent years has been that the actual explosive device are quite crude uh, that even if they come to fruition uh, they, they're badly made this, this clearly someone was knew what they were doing here which immediately upticks the concern level because it says okay who trained this person where did they come from what is their organizational structure what might be coming tomorrow or next week so the, this is as you said at the beginning of the interview I think the most serious very obviously uh, investigation since July 7 uh, and is jumping up that radar do you quickly. think that this will spur a public conversation a free exchange on whether or not there's a problem, a, a, a real problem that is dividing British society, taking the lives of innocents, as we saw tonight, um, or will the people in charge do their best to tamp down that conversation, which is what appears to have happened? No, I think it's inevitable, the conversation, for the, sadly for a simple reason. This, this reflects what behind the scenes counterterrorism officials be very concerned with the long times, the targeting, as it seems, with, of children in particular uh, and teenagers. There's obviously an emotive element to that. Um, it's in the middle of an election season as well. On June 8th, next month, the British people will go to the polls and uh, the Prime Minister and the main opponent, Jeremy Corbyn, have quite divergent viewpoints on right. whether terrorism is a serious concern. So it comes at a very politically emotive time and I think there will be rendering in terms of national conversation. There, there ought to be. We're going to go right back.